On Friday, November 27th, teams from the Abu Dhabi's Department of Municipalities and Transportation implemented demolition activities to bring down the four-building Mina Plaza Tower, one of the biggest blowdowns the world has seen in the last five years and one of the first of its magnitude to be witnessed in the region. I'm Anup Oman, the Deputy Editor of Construction Week Middle East, and joining me on the latest episode of Construction Week's expert interview series is Bill O'Regan, the Chief Executive Officer of Modan Properties, who will be talking to us about the preparatory phases, the safety procedures, and the demolition of the four buildings in Abu Dhabi, as well as the renovation plans for Mina Zayed. To get the show started, thank you, Bill, for joining us here today. My pleasure, Anup. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, Bill. Could you walk us through the initial stages of the demolition from the reason behind the decision to the preparatory phases and the insurance procedures for this world record breaking demolition? Sure. So uh, initially, Department of Municipalities and Transportation uh, looked at remaster planning the, the MENA uh, area, um, really looking at a regeneration uh, plan for the, the port area, uh, while maintaining its importance as uh, a center of commerce and trade for uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, and of course the, the history uh, and the, the culture through the souks that are incorporated in the, uh, in the current development to also be incorporated into the future development. Um, through that exercise, it was determined that the development really in the area of the wharf what was appropriate is for a low density um, uh, development. Um, and Mina Plaza, which was originally started construction back in 2008, really didn't fit with the new vision for, for Mina. Um, it was at that point that departments of municipalities and transportation appointed Modon um, to clear the entire site. So there was a lot of uh, buildings existing on the, on the wharf, some uh, mostly temporary buildings, warehouses and, uh, and the like. And of course, to also study the demolition of Mina Plaza itself. Um, initially, what we have done is uh, is reached out to a specialist engineering, uh, demolition engineering consultant uh, from the US, ASI. And we have completely remodeled the building, taking all of the as-built information. So not taking the original design model, but taking the as-built information and creating a new model for the building. And from that, uh, we looked at reverse engineering, so uh, really uh, engineering the demolition of the building with multiple different uh, methods, uh, different methods of mechanical demolition um, and, of course, controlled implosion. Um, because of the special characteristics of the building, in fact, uh, we talk about a building, but in fact, it's five um, structures, the podium and the four towers that come out of the, uh, the podium itself. Um, and, of course, they're all interconnected and interrelated, um, you couldn't bring down one without uh, having an impact on the other. Um, so all of that had to be engineered and it was determined at that time through that exercise that the safest way to bring down the four towers in the podium was by controlled demolition using um, explosives. Um, so Anup, another, another big part of the, the recognition of the scale of the, of the project, of course, was that um, we achieved a new Guinness World Record, um, tower number one, um, at uh, 165.032 meters is the tallest uh, reinforced uh, concrete tower to be uh, demolished by, uh, by controlled implosion. Um, and I think it's just uh, a, really it's a recognition of everyone who was involved on the project of their efforts um, that, uh, that uh, you know, even in creating a, a world record um, that uh, we were able to, uh, to achieve that as planned safely um, what was really incredible for, uh, for us to see on, uh, on Friday was that the buildings came down exactly as simulated. You know? A simulation is always a simulation, um, but really the, the level of engineering work and the level of, uh, of planning that went into this um, really came through on, on Friday with the, the buildings falling exactly as we had uh, planned and as we had, uh, as we had hoped for. Now, Bill, this is also a historic milestone for Abu Dhabi and reaffirms the capital's ability to execute mega projects safely. But could you share details of the stakeholders you have worked with and the collaborative safety procedures involved in completing this de demolition, not only successfully, but also safely? 
Look, I, and, and most importantly, safely, uh, Anup, you know, look, safety is always a, is a core value of, uh, of any developer, of any construction firm, but in particular for, uh, for demolition projects, um, safety really comes to the fore. You know, typically in construction projects, we're driven by, by quality, time and, um, uh, and cost. Um, with all of the core values uh, around that, such as safety, but on a demolition project, you are really driven, uh, your decision-making process is really driven by making the, the decisions around safety. Um, in terms of collaboration, um, I don't want to miss anyone out uh, on, this, uh, on this interview, but we have collaborated with over um, uh, 40 different government departments, agencies, authorities, the security forces, all of the departments of the security forces from, um, from the explosives department that gave us the permission to import uh, the material and helped us to keep the material secure from the time it entered the country and subsequently the Emirate and subsequently the, our site, um, to the other police departments, Abu Dhabi ports, um, some other critical infrastructure assets in Abu Dhabi that are a little bit far away from the building but were impacted by the demolition, such as the airport. Um, Abu Dhabi Airport uh, facilitated the, the demolition and uh, actually had to uh, had to shut down the flight path over Mina Plaza for uh, for um, a period of time during the demolition. So really, the, it was an enormous ex exercise in collaboration, um, and I, I think it's really a reflection on the uh, ambition of Abu Dhabi that we were able to keep that collaboration going with all of the challenges that 2020 uh, brought uh, with it. Um, and really the, the spirits that people uh, cooperated with on this, uh, on this project allowed it um, to successfully happen um, and allowed us to be extremely confident going into, uh, going into Friday. Absolutely. And speaking of Friday the 27th, could you walk us through the implementation of the demolition of the four buildings and how the demolition was carried out specifically? Okay, so effectively there was three phases in the in the demolition uh, noop. Uh, originally, while we were still uh, working on the engineering of the demolition, we did a strip out. Um, so strip out meant removing any um, part of the building that could be removed, such as the facade um, and some of the MEP installations that were already installed. There were some lifts, um, any piping, etc., that could be recovered from the building. So that was the first phase. Second phase was preparation for the, um, uh, for the charging. Um, that meant we had to drill over 18,000 holes in the structural members that, uh, that we wanted um, uh, to place explosives in, um, and also weaken some other parts of the building. We uh, either cut uh, some shear walls or weaken some shear walls, weaken some of the, the lift shafts, some of the critical uh, structural members that uh, allowed the building to stay standing safely, um, but weakened it suitably so it would perform the way we wanted it to perform during the blowdown. And then of course the third phase was the, was the charging. That's where we actually brought the explosive material onto site and we used a combination of, of two materials, uh, plastic explosives um, for, the, for the larger structural members um, and uh, detonator cord uh, for, the, for the more slender uh, structural members. So. If you can imagine, on the larger members, we've drilled the holes that I mentioned, and we place explosives, and that it uh, it disrupts those members from inside. The detonator cord is wrapped around the member and effectively slices it uh, during the detonation. Um, so, in these eighteen thousand uh, holes, we had to have eighteen thousand individual, uh, individually programmed uh, detonators, all time controlled, all sequenced, um, and all connected back to the uh, back to the firing points um, so in fact we had successfully completed the charging of the building um, around the 19th of, uh, of November um, which allowed us really to last week uh, checking double checking and triple checking um, that everything was in order uh, and again you know it was that level of of scrutiny that allowed us Friday very very calm and very very positive that we had taken all the measures possible to make sure that what we were doing was safe and um, that's that were that was the the exercise inside the building outside the building the cooperation that we had with departments of municipalities and transportation the integrated transportation center um, as I said all of the security forces civil defense in order to make 
um, initially an exclusion zone of about 500 meters in, uh, in radius. Um, and just before the blowdown, that was expanded to 1.2 uh, kilometers where we kept out uh, all traffic, shut down uh, all of the roads. Um, we had um, uh, assistance from the uh, to oversee that area, secure that area, and ensure that nobody was in there um, to blow um, In fact, the, the radius of impact is, is much, much smaller from the blowdown itself. You have three things to be cognizant of. One is the physical debris. The second is the sound wave, which is, is quite powerful. Um, and the third is the dust. Um, we had modeled for all of the um, wind directions uh, what the dust cloud would, uh, would do. Um, thankfully, Mother Nature helped us out a lot on Friday because the most favorable model, of course, was an offshore wind. And, uh, and that's exactly what we got on, on Friday morning. So in fact, just after the demolition, if you've seen the videos, you'll have seen that all of the dust cloud um, was blown uh, over the empty land in Mina and towards the sea. And in fact, uh, apart from, um, apart from the, uh, the sound wave and the loud bang um, and a slight interruption to traffic uh, during the demolition itself, there was very, very little impact on, on Abu Dhabi and on its citizens and, res and residents. It was great hearing your insights, Bill. Thanks for taking the, the time to join us on the show. That's my pleasure. It's our pleasure as well, Bill. For those of you watching, you know the drill. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more such videos with experts in the industry. That's all for now. And until next time, goodbye.